Welcome to this demonstration of managing development lifecycle with Oracle Visual Builder Studio. My name is Shai Schmelzer. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how we manage development lifecycle for a visual application using Visual Builder Studio, but the same concept and steps can be applied to other technologies as well. We're going to show you how to do issue tracking, how to manage your development team using agile planning and development sprint management, how to do Git-based code versioning of your code, how to do visual development of your application, how to handle merge request or pull request and how to conduct code reviews, and how to automate the continuous delivery of your application and your continuous deployment. Let's get started. We're starting our journey as one of our developers, Jeff, inside our project. Jeff just saw that we did a deployment, so he goes to our environment looking at the Visual Builder instance and check out one of our deployment. This is the Movies application. He can click on the application to actually see the application running over here in this tab. What he notices is that we're fetching undefined movies. That's because we are missing a value for this field. And we also don't have a description of what should go into this field. In order to fix this, he's going to log an issue in the issue tracking system in Visual Builder Studio. We're going to create a new issue, specify a summary of an, and a description, and a bunch of other properties that can be provided for each issue. Many of the list of items here are also configurable, and you can also add your own custom fields. Once we have the summary and the description, we're going to choose the type. This can be a defect, a task, a feature, or epics and stories. We can set priorities, severity, and also the component of the project that we're interested in fixing, and then assign a default owner for this. We can give an estimated time that it's going to take, a due date, and even use agile points. Let's create the issue in our system and we'll get a new issue. In this case, it's issue 21. This is now in our backlog of issues. So we can go into our Kanban or Scrum dashboard and look at our current backlog and our current running sprint. We can move items from our backlog into the development sprint. Once we move an item, we can see it in our active sprint dashboard over here. And we can see who in our team has which tasks to cover in the current running sprint. There's also a bunch of reports that we can get on a sprint. Now let's switch over to the view of the developer. So this is Shai as a developer, looking at the same project and at the same environment. If he looks under issues, he can see the issues that are assigned to him, for example including issue 21, which was the just filed for us. We can then go into the board and say that we are going to work on this issue and move this issue from an unconfirmed status to an in-progress status simply by dragging and dropping. This would allow the rest of the team to know exactly where we are in our development sprint. Now let's go and work on the code. The code is stored in a Git repository over here. But with Visual Builder, we also have the concept of workspace that allows us to visually work on the code. We're going to clone and create a workspace from the Git repository. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Fix21, map to our Git repository, and we're going to create a new branch of our code. We'll give the branch a name, again, branch21, and we can also map to a Visual Builder environment, one of the instances that we can use. Then we're going to click to create our workspace. The workspace is basically a local copy of the code for the developer to work on without influencing the code of the main Git repository. We get our copy to open up, and then we can navigate to the page that we want to modify and open it in our visual editor in Visual Builder Studio. Our page opens up and we can see the exact page that we saw previously in our application and we can start to modify it. Let's click on the search page and put a placeholder value over here that says movie name. Once we do this change, this is already tracked in the Git um, aspect. We're going to change one more thing. There's a variable over here that needs to have a default value. So we'll go to the variable and set a default value. We can now preview the change that we did in our live preview 
over here. We can see the value over here if we switch to live mode. If we um, remove the value, we'll see our placeholder. We can also take the changes, of course, in our Git panel over here, where we can see the different files and we can do all the Git operations on those files. For example, we're going to commit those two changes as one transaction into our local copy of the code. We'll provide a message for our commit and we'll indicate the issue that we're resolving here, issue 21. When we click commit, this is our local copy. If we want to push it to the main repository, we can click the publish button. Publish button would recognize the changes and can take us through a merge request process. Again, we'll provide a description of the changes. We'll specify team members who are going to review our code. So we're going to put ourselves as one reviewer and we're going to put Jeff as the other reviewer. And we can also create the link over here to issue 21 so our reviewers would know what specific issues we're fixing with those code changes. Clicking the Publish button now creates a merge request after a push into the main Git repository. Let's go back to our project view. And over here, we would now be able to see our processing in our activity stream. And if we click on the Merge 22, will be taken into the merge request area of Visual Builder Studio. Over here, we can see, for example, the exact changes we did in the files. If we are happy with the results, we can click the Approve button. Since those are changes I did, I'm going to approve them right now. And I'm going to now wait for the other reviewers to review our code. So let's switch over to view it from the Jeff perspective. Again, if Jeff now refreshes his dashboard, he would see that our issue 21 is right now in progress. Also, if he goes to his homepage, he's going to see the request for a merge review. He's also going to get an email about it. And he can also look, of course, in the merge request area and see all the merge requests that are assigned to him. When he clicks on a merge request, just like before, he can see all the information about the merge request, including the code changes. If he have comment on the code, he can go over and directly comment on specific lines of code, providing comments or any discussion points. A discussion point can then be marked as need attention or just as a comment. Need attention would require resolving before we can actually do a merge. In any case, Jeff is okay with the changes, even though he has a little comment. So he's going to say that this looks okay and approve those changes. If we switch back into the view of Shai, the developer, he would now be able to see the comments from Jeff if we'll do a refresh on our merge request. Again, all of this is also communicated via emails from one developer to the other automatically. So we can see the whole discussion over here, including the comments that Jeff left on our code. If we're happy with the current way the code looks like, we can hit the merge button to merge our changes from the branch into the main line of code. In addition, we can indicate to delete the current branch and to close the issue and mark it as a fixed issue. Once we complete the merge request, if we'll go back to our merge request, there's no thing else in our queue. We can of course look at the past merge request over here. Doing the merge request started a build process. We can see this in the job queue. We have a movie package build job that is now waiting for an executor to start. If we click on this build job, we'll be able to see the configuration. The build job is hooked up to our Git repository and our main branch. It's automatically going to be invoked each time that someone commits something into the main branch, and it's going to optimize the application and package it to create a zip file ready to be deployed. So this is an example of what a build file can do or a build job. We can see that the build job right now is running and is executing as we're watching the demo. This build job is also part of a pipeline. A pipeline can take several build jobs and connect them together to work one after the other. Right now, this pipeline is running because the first job in this pipeline is executing. The movie package job is executing. Over here, we have a visual representation of the progress of our build job. We can now see that the two build jobs completed, both of them are marked with green. 
This means that our application has been deployed. So we can go back to the application over here and reload it. We're still at the same session, so the value of the search variable is still going to be there, star. But if we remove the value, we'll see our placeholder text that we added to our application. So our changes have been applied onto the running application in an automated way once we committed them and merged them into our main branch. And of course, if we'll go back to our um, dashboard, we're going to see that issue 21 is now appearing in the fixed completed section.